CataractCoach.com, Ira Scaffold and Iowa Scaffold, using the iris and the IOL to create a barrier when the capsule is weak or split open or gone. Wow, so there's the nucleus. You can see it's very much displaced. Wow, wow, wow. A lot of zyanide loss here. It's going to be really tough to get a rexus done, but you can try. Remember, as you do this, get that rexus, if you can, set it up on the lens nucleus. Not obviously set it up in the pupil because the lens is so displaced. Now, as you do this, you've got to use this two-hand technique, which is brilliant here, holding it with one forcep, the capsule edge, and as you tear the rexus with the other. Now, if you're going to get the whole thing out and do a Yamane, which is probably what you're going to end up doing in a case like this, you don't really need to save all this. You could just do an intracap, do an SICS incision, take the nucleus out completely whole. But let's show you FACO style. So obviously, we've got some vitreous prolapse already, trying to get somewhat of a rexus completed. Again, it's not super important if you're not going to save the bag anyway. You want to get this out of there. And again, remember, an alternative is just do an SICS incision and then take this whole lens out you know, through a main incision without breaking it up. And you can certainly do that. And that may be easier. That'd be an intracap because you're moving the capsule too. So now I'm hearing more viscoelastic going inside here. And it looks like there's probably some vitreous prolapse there. Maybe there's the capsule. Okay, cut in the capsule lead. So it's not an easy case. Getting this done here. And you can tell we sped the video up a bit. Here, using a chopper to go around the nucleus to kind of lift it up and maybe bring it up in the anterior chamber or maybe trying to split it. So let's see what's going to go on here. So a ball tip chopper one had a different kind of bent needle in the other. And now look at this, bringing the nucleus above the iris and pulling the iris, what I like to call the manual mile call. Grabbing that iris and bringing it in to make the pupil small so you can help support that lens nucleus. Look at that. That looks pretty good. Now chopping it in two halves. So you can just emulsify it here in the anterior chamber. Now remember, you don't want that capsular bag, though, to fall back either. So here, breaking it up into quadrants in the anterior chamber, using those two choppers. So again, if you haven't put the finger probe in the eye even. So there we go. Now you've got nice four quadrants. Looks great. And now push them to the side. Create a little gap, and now get the lens in. And the lens, you want the optic to sit on top of the iris. And so that's going to be your barrier effect, your scaffold. So there's the eye. Well, leave that trailing haptic outside the eye, and that's going to be important. That trailing haptic outside the eye is just so the eye well doesn't fall back in the vitreous cavity. So now you've got a good barrier. Look at that. Now with the iris and the eye well, that's a complete scaffold, and it's totally protected. Now, when you do the phaco probe here, you better use easy settings, low flow, like Osher taught us. Go in there nice and easy, a little bit of buzzing at a time. Don't go too crazy. And the nice and slow flow, very low flow. So maybe 10 cc's a minute at most, much less than normal. If the lens shifts, yeah, yeah, push it back. Put more viscoelastic. Viscoelastic is your friend here. And now going inside here, looks like there's an anterior vitrector. Now going back to the FACO probe. Again, this is coming, coming to be a neat case. That's a beautiful technique. Let me tell you about our podcast. You know, every single week we have a beautiful podcast that teaches you all the secrets of ophthalmology. No, I'm totally serious. Check it out. It's everywhere you find podcasts. Search for Cataract Coach or search for my name. You'll find it. I promise you will love it and learn so much. It'll make you a better ophthalmologist. Now, there you go. More viscoelastic. And now, look, planning for Yamane. That's it for sure. There's still some nuclear pieces, though, in the eye. I may want to get those out first, no? Or perhaps because the eye oil is just not staying centered and not acting enough of a, a scaffold or barrier can externalize the haptics now. Okay, reasonable. There's the one side. Here's the other one with a 30-gauge um, thin-walled needle. Get that going. Here's the needle. There you go. Trailing ha haptic going in there, too. Where's the optic, by the way? Look. Where's the optic? This is why I say sometimes we're better off having Yamanes done by our vitretinal colleagues because they do a complete parse plane of vitrectomy. Oh, by the way, that's the other option in this case. You can just do the send this patient to your retinal colleague. They'll do a parse plane of vitrectomy, parse plane of lensectomy, do the Yamane for you. You tell them the lens part you want to put in there, make sure the patient ends up a little myopic, and then three months later, you can do uh, laser vision correction, PRK or LASIK, for the residual myopic and astigmatic refractive error and hit this eye perfectly plain on patient who needs to build. So that is the other option there. So again, scaffold technique here, emulsifying all these pieces. Looks really good. 
Here's the last piece coming out. Careful to protect the iris. Good job. A little bit more anterior vitrectomy. Be careful doing anterior vitrectomy through the main incision because it leaks so much. And there's the post-op look. Wow. What a beautiful result for such a difficult case. Interesting iris and IOL scaffold technique. And remember, that podcast, every single week, a brand new podcast. Check it out. You'll love it. And see our website. If you haven't downloaded the free Cataract Coach PDF book, what are you waiting for?